There are multiple PI3 kinase inhibitors that are being tested in clinical trials. The only one that is approved by the FDA right now is adalidocin. But just because they're PI3 kinase inhibitors doesn't mean that they have the same toxicity profile because um, route of administration, dose and schedule, and the chemical structure can play a role in predicting um, better safety or uh, worse safety profiles. So copanisib is um, a, a pan PI3 kinase inhibitor, uh, but preferentially inhibit two isoforms, the alpha and delta. It's given by intravenous infusion, so you give it once a week, three consecutive weeks, and then one week break. So by doing so, you're bypassing the gut as an oral administration, and you're giving it like intermittently once a week. Um, so you're not, it's not, not continuous dosing. Plus the different chemical structure compared to adelicid. All those may have contributed to what seems to be, for now, a better safety profile compared to adelicid. And better safety profile in the three things that I mentioned. A very low incidence of pneumonitis, uh, transaminitis and, and colitis. You know, the incidence is about 1.5% compared to sometimes 10% or so with the adelicid and some other PI3 kinase inhibitors. There are now several new PI3 kinase inhibitors in clinical development. One of these is copanlucid, which is a pan PI3 kinase inhibitor. Idelalucid is a delta isoform specific inhibitor. Copanlucid is a pan inhibitor, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, but mostly the alpha delta. Now, the delta is probably most important in the activity of PI3 kinase inhibitors in lymphoma, there are those who feel that the alpha may also contribute to some activity. I think that's uh, not as clear. One of the major differences is the administration of the drugs. Idelalisib is a pill twice a day as long as it works. On the other hand, copanlucid is intravenous, weekly for three weeks and then a week off indefinitely. So this will have a number of differences, I'll take that part out, potentially indefinitely. What was the next part of it? Oh yeah. When you look at the activity of these two drugs, they're fairly comparable, have a, around the 60-ish percent response rate with a median progression-free survival of 11 to 12 months. The biggest difference is in the mode of administration, the schedule of administration, and in the toxicity profile. Now, the safety profiles of copanlucid and idelalisib are fairly different. Idelalisib has itis associated with it. Itis. It has pneumonitis, it has colitis, and it has transaminitis. Itis, inflammation, it stimulates an inflammatory reaction in those organs which cause the resulting toxicity. Early on, you can get a simple diarrhea which is easy to take care of, but around seven, eight, nine months is when you can get a colitis, which can be very, very difficult. The transaminitis tends to be transient. You hold the drug, it gets better, you give it again, it frequently doesn't come back, or if it does, you hold the drug, and when it comes back to normal, you give a lower dose, and frequently you can move along. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you have to, uh, you have to discontinue the drug, particularly for the colitis which can be life-threatening. Copanlucid is given intravenously and bypasses the GI tract as a result. So you don't see as frequently, although you do see the pneumonitis, the transaminitis, and even occasionally colitis, but far less frequently than with idelalisib. What you do see is hyperglycemia and hypertension. They're relatively manageable, but I want to stress this. With the first publication of idelalisib, we didn't see the colitis. We didn't see a lot of this stuff. 
Why didn't we? Because the median follow-up is six months in that publication. And as I just mentioned, the colitis and others don't occur seven, eight, nine months. So as we were following the patients further and further along, all of a sudden these toxicities appeared. The initial data with Capanlisib has a median follow-up of probably six months or less. Are we going to see more toxicities the longer we follow patients on treatment with this drug? Remains to be seen, but we have to keep our eyes open. Now, whether or not the difference in PI3 subset targeting will have any clinical implications is unclear. Whether targeting the alpha will improve on just targeting the delta isoform, we don't know. Um, but based on the clinical results that we have to date, they are fairly comparable between Idella and Copanlisib, with response rates around 60% and progression-free survival in the range of 11 to maybe 12 months.